that this is the bastion at the castle. This is where it all happened from. And can you tell me where the chain would have well, been? The chain effectively went from somewhere around here, across the river. Um, the other side was green marshland at, the, at that time. And, and the chain was the only principal defence that the dockyard had um, against the uh, um, Dutch fleet on its way up the Medway. At the time, this castle that had been built a century before had been effectively downrated to become a powder magazine and wasn't effectively armed at all. Uh, so. Uh, there was no other defence on this castle? There was, there was no other real defence on the castle, although by the time the Dutch fleet arrived, because it took several days to come up the river, a volunteer artillery company had galloped down the banks of the Medway and set up in emplacements around the front of the castle, somewhere about where we are now. Okay. Were they surprised that the Dutch came, were coming this far? I think they were shocked at the Dutch audacity of the Dutch uh, fleet at the time. Um, it certainly hadn't been anything that had been attempted before, um, but the country itself was in no fit state to retaliate. Um, the reason the, uh, um, the raid had such a devastating effect was that the English fleet at the time was unmanned. The country had run out of money due to the Great Fire of London and the plague that had preceded it. And uh, uh, the fleet ships were all laid up here on the Medway, uh, just waiting to be taken. Yeah, laying idle, basically. Lay, laying idle. They weren't, had no crew on board them. They weren't armed with guns. Um, they were uh, um, waiting for another year. Sitting ducks. Absolutely. Yeah. So what happened? Well, if, if we were here in 1667, what would we have seen here from here? Well, what we would have seen was the, uh, the, the English fleet at anchor right the way down the river, as far as the eye could see, from the bend of the river at Rochester, right the way down this reach of the river, round the corner, past the chain. I mean, the principal ships were actually moored beyond the chain, so they weren't even defended by the castle or the chain. Um, and then the Dutch fleet made its way up the Medway, um, a, feat, a tremendous feat of seamanship, because the Medway is a difficult, twisting river. It's about 12 miles to the sea at Sheerness from here, and not something you do quickly. Um, and came up against the first of the English ships. Um, they certainly would have um, come across a guard ship that was manned. Um, then they uh, took the Royal Charles and carried on up to the dockyard, um, broke through the chain, whether the chain was released or whether it was actually um, broken by the advancing Dutch fleet is a bit lost in history, and then came, ac uh, came up across a bl blockade of ships that the dockyard had put together, uh, moored across the river. Some of the larger ships have been hastily rafted together to create a much more uh, important and defensive blockade of the river. And those ships were set on fire, um, whether they were set on fire by the Dutch attackers or whether they were set on fire by the defenders or just by the action. But it was enough to actually stop the Dutch fleet getting further up the river and the dockyard effectively was saved. Yeah, because they were untouched, the dockyards. The dockyard was untouched. If the, if the Dutch fleet had got to the dockyard, landed men and done serious damage to it, it would have really had a huge impact on the future of the Royal Navy. In what way? Well, they estimated at the time, Samuel Pepys estimated it would have taken 20 years to rebuild the dockyard. Um, and that's a, a long time in history. And now they had a chance to rebuild the fleet rapidly. And now they had a chance to rebuild the fleet. And as history so it shows, as Samuel Pepys went to Parliament and got the money for a 30 ship replacement um, fleet programme and um, that of course were modern ships built to late 17th century standards rather than early 17th century standards and formed the heart of the Royal Navy that went on through into the 18th century to seize worldwide control of the world's oceans. Basically laid the basis of the, 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 the supremacy of the Royal Navy. I think you can, you, you can make the case that the Dutch raid sort of certainly helped it, helped it along its way. Yeah, kicked you into gear. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, they say it was a very daring raid, but they were, were very well prepared, weren't they? They were well prepared and they were also aided by a lot of, well, by a number of English seamen. Um, the Royal Navy hadn't paid its men for many months, if not years, and there are horrendous ac accounts in the uh, archives of seamen dying from starvation around the ports simply because they couldn't get enough food or money to pay for food. So. Uh, the, uh, the people were quite, or some people were quite happy to support the, uh, the Dutch fleet uh, in return, it said for money, but uh, I suspect just in aggravation against the government. Uh, but having said all of that, 
This is a very tricky river. It shoals, the winds blow in different directions, and to come up um, with a fleet um, against opposition in, in parts was a tremendous feat of um, navigation, if nothing else. How many ships were lost? Well, the Royal Charles was taken, um, and certainly six other ships were either lost, sunk, or, or burnt to the waterline. And those generally were some of the largest ships of the Royal Navy, so a very, very significant uh, um, attack and a very significant impact. Yeah, and many more smaller ships were gone as well, wasn't it? And there were smaller ships gone as well, but it's the big ones that made the difference. Yeah. What impact did it make in London at the time? Well, in London, people... <laughs> no, let me rephrase that one. I think, I think it had a huge impact in London. Nobody was really sure what the Dutch intentions were. This was the main fleet base. You attack Chatham, defeat the fleet here, um, then almost the kingdom's undone. The attack and landing of Dutch soldiers or Marines on um, at, at Queenborough, overrunning the um, blockhouse there, many thought was potentially the start of an invasion and an attack on London itself. John Evelyn, one of the, uh, um, a, a diarist like Samuel Pepys, was a commissioner of the Sick and Hurt Board, and his diary covers an account of him sitting in Gillingham over there somewhere watching the battle unfold deciding as he accounts for it to leave at this point and return to send his, pl his plate to the countryside where it may be safe um, really fearing that this could be the prelude to a major assault on London yeah which didn't happen which didn't happen no, no. Um, after almost 350 years piece of the royal charge is coming back to England how, how unique is that? I think it's a, going to be a great occasion. Um, it's one of the few major pieces of stern decoration to survive from a ship of that period. Um, certainly a ship of the significance of the Royal Charles. Um, the Royal Charles was built as the Naseby, as part of Oliver Cromwell's um, navy, named after one of the most important battles of the English Civil War. It was the ship that went to Holland to collect Charles II at the Restoration and brought him back to England to regain the throne. And at that point, it was renamed the Royal Charles. It had this most amazing, brilliant, most, most, most wonderful carving of the Royal Coat of Arms, which, of course, has been on display in the Rijksmuseum for many, many years. And to see it come back to, to Britain for the temporary exhibition at Greenwich uh, is going to be re really a tremendous sight. Are you going to give it back? I have no doubt the deal is struck that it has to go back. <laughs> Would you like to keep it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, I've heard of that. Um, well, of course, it, it's part of the Royal Navy's history, but it's as much part of the Dutch Navy's history. Um, um, to, uh, to, to, to the Royal Navy, to Chatham, to the Medway, um, the events of 1667 are uh, downgraded in history to the, uh, to the Medway raid and something that's been largely forgotten about, uh, apart from historians and those visiting the, uh, the, the dockyard. Um, it's of greater significance, I suspect, to people yeah. in Holland today. No, it's a shared history, though. It's a very much a shared history, and it, uh, yeah. it's a shared maritime endeavour that goes back 350 years, as you say. Thank you.